welcome to Eye on Gainesville. I'm Katil Feltz. Summertime means vacation time, and that usually means packing a suitcase and taking off headed to your favorite destination. How many times have you passed by one of our local attractions right here in Gainesville and wondered what was going on inside? Don't you think this is the year you should actually find out? On this edition of Eye on Gainesville, we picked two local destinations. Our first stop this morning will be in the heart of downtown Gainesville, the Northeast Georgia History Center, where you can actually touch a tornado and sit on the front porch of an Indian cabin. Then we'll come back here to the Francis Meadows Aquatic and Community Center to cool off in this warm summer heat. First, the news in our city. Two public meetings are planned this month to discuss the results of the city's eight-week pilot garbage program. The first meeting will be held Thursday, July 15th at 5.30 at the Georgia Mountain Center. The second meeting will be held Thursday, July 22nd at 5.30 at the Gainesville Civic Center. The pilot program was implemented at the request of citizens to determine how much money could be saved by reducing garbage pickup from twice a week to once a week. The farmer's market on the square got off to a great start in June and is growing every week as more vegetables and more farmers join in on the Friday event. In addition to farm-grown vegetables, you'll find breads and honey and plants. The market on the square is held every Friday from 2.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. My advice to you is to dress for the warm weather and bring a big basket to take home all your goodies. And the Gainesville Police Department precinct is now open at the Featherbone Center. It's the new home for officers coming in off the road to complete reports. The precinct was officially dedicated in a ribbon cutting ceremony at the end of May. Police Chief Brian Kelly recognized several people who helped make the new location possible. Dr. Carol Turner of the Lanier Technical College Manufacturing Development Center for donating the site. His administrative assistant Brandy Smith for her effort in coordinating everything. And Francisco Maya for donating his labor for the interior finishing of the precinct. Sergeant Jim Von Essen of the Gainesville Police Department recently gave us a tour of the space. This is a space that's been available to the Gainesville Police Department for our officers to come in and do paperwork, uh, conduct whatever business they need to do uh, in this area right here. So it's, it's been a good opportunity for them to have it. Um, in addition to be available to all the Gainesville Police Departments, the Specialized Service Division is specifically housed out of this area right here. Okay, and notice, Jim, when I look around me, behind me I see motorcycles, I see some bikes that are over here, and in that back little uh, cubby area where we have some officers working, I, I see one of our canine dogs actually uh, hanging around, and she looks like she's actually on a break right now. So when you say specialized services, what do you mean? Specialized services is made up of a group of, of, uh, of officers that are specialized in different areas. We have the traffic enforcement unit, which uh, in the future also contain uh, accident investigators. They're part of the group over here. In addition to that, we have our four canine handlers, uh, two aggressive crime enforcement officers, and our park ranger, specifically located out of this building right here. How does this precinct compare or work with the new Gainesville Police Department that's going to open in a few months? This gives us the opportunity to spread our officers around throughout the city. The mall precinct, which is located almost on the other side of the city, allows officers to be worked out of there, and at the same time, if officers can be worked out of here. As opposed to putting them all in one area, so they should be working in that one area. If something happened on the other side of the city, it makes a response time further. So precincts kind of spread the officers out when they do their work and allow them to respond to situations quicker that way. Now, are you all set up so that you only will respond to this particular area that you're located in or are you free to go if you're needed to anywhere throughout the city? As far as the SSD is concerned, they're responsible uh, in, in the entire area of the city. So now when you say SSD, let me interrupt you so you can explain to our viewers what that is. Spe the Specialized Service Divisions, our traffic guys, our canine handlers, our aggressive uh, crime enforcement and our park ranger, they'll be out of here and, and their responsible areas include the entire city. However, patrol officers, they would, the, the officers that are actually assigned to districts in this area, they'll be available to use this precinct to do their paperwork. And the officers that are assigned on the other side of the city, they'll probably use the other precincts to do their paperwork to keep them kind of separated. It was just, uh, according to what I've been told, just, um, I guess, kind of a coincidence that all this uh, worked out for the Gainesville Police Department. It, it did. It was real fortunate for us. We were really blessed in, uh, in the uh, Lanier Tech inviting us over here to take some of their space 
and bring a precinct over here. It couldn't happen at a better time. We're about to lose our police department. Uh, we're needing some space. We're growing. It just was a really good opportunity for us to come over here. Well, we're really excited to be here and to see the work that you all will be doing. And as you mentioned, there'll be some more people moving in to do work. And uh, Anja, the canine, we need to we need to give her and tell you everyone what her name is. We've, we've met her before, but uh, she's back there. She's taking a break. Uh, bring us up to date, if you would. We haven't done any stories on the canines in a while, and that's always everyone's favorite part. I guess the biggest thing on the canine change right now is before they were tied uh, to the patrol unit uh, each one had one dog assigned to each of the four shifts and they were pretty well patrol officers that had a part-time duty of becoming uh, canine handlers uh, and it, we're not doing patrol they do work canine we've moved the canine handlers off of patrol and put them under specialized service division so we could more uh, take a better advantage of the canine asset so we could they could be assigned to actually work more of the canine duties as opposed to doing uh, routine uh, reports for calls that type of stuff they can concentrate on canine calls it's going to give them an opportunity to do that uh, we've had a few dogs that retired in the last year uh, we've got three new dogs since that uh, over the last year and uh, they're coming along well and we're looking at getting a fourth dog probably uh, in the next few months Okay, so some, some changes certainly here at the, at the police department, and, and like I said, the dogs are, are always an interesting story to, to tell and not to take the place of the officers, uh, certainly because we couldn't do it without you. Well, Jim, we appreciate you once again letting us come in here today and just really look forward to um, the brand new Gainesville Police Department that's going to be opening in just a few short months. Right now, we're thinking it's going to be about September and certainly much needed for the city of Gainesville. We're going to have a big community celebration. I want to invite everyone to come out and see that brand new space as well, and we'll certainly be advertising that here on TV 18. There are plenty of opportunities for fun if you're staying home this summer. My first recommendation is right here in downtown Gainesville. It's so close you can see it from Green Street. It's the Northeast Georgia History Center. I talked earlier with Managing Director Glenn Kyle. Glenn, welcome to the show today. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Real excited to be here at Chief White Path's cabin. Certainly have been in the History Center many times and I've, I've had a little tour of the cabin but never just kind of sat out here and, and relaxed and took it all in. Well, it's very pleasant. Uh, we have this wonderful facility here, and the cabin really is the jewel in our crown. It was originally built, we believe, sometime in the 1780s uh, by an Indian family. Some people are amazed that Indians built cabins, but in, in North Georgia, the Cherokee tribe was one of the most assimilated tribes into, into European culture. And the young man who grew up in this cabin uh, came to be known as White Path. Chief may be somewhat of a misnomer, but he was certainly a leader among his people. Tell me how this came to be in Gainesville, Georgia. A Gainesville man by the name of Don Cooley became interested in some of his genealogy and he determined that he was a descendant of White Path and went over to the area, area in Gilmer that was called White Path, didn't know the cabin was there, but asked around, found out that it was, and became very much enamored with a cabin and with its past history. He spoke to the, uh, the current owner of the cabin and the property, and the gentleman was willing to let it go. And Mr. Cooley went to the county fathers in Gilmer and said, we need to preserve this. At the time, they weren't able. So he brought the cabin, disassembled it, and moved it over here uh, to Hall County, over on what's now Dawsonville Highway, and kept it there for several years. At a certain point, James Mathis, Sr., went to talk to him about the importance, the historical importance of the cabin, and they worked together, and in 1995, the cabin was moved here uh, before the rest of the museum building was even built, uh, 10 years before that happened, actually. So the cabin's here now. We use it to interpret the story of the Cherokee, of the settlers that came in after that, and, you know, the roof, the porch, some of these things are not original, but those logs, those structural logs are original. And it's really unique because therein lies 200 years of some of Georgia's most important and significant history. We have these two structures, this white path cabin, as well as a blacksmith shop located next to it. It's just a remarkable facility.